And we're live. Here we go. Hi, everybody. Hello. <laughs> awesome. Um, so welcome to the webinar, everybody. Before we get started, as always, let's do a little bit of a sound check, uh, make sure that all the technology is working. So if you can hear us and see us, uh, if just place say yes, and also where you're from, just so we know where everyone's from. Filippi here from, from Montreal. Ça va, Filippi? Uh, or Philippe. Um, so yeah, if you just uh, let us know where you're at or um, if it's working, we'll we'll make sure it's good and then we can get into the content. I like your French accent. I think it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Two years of French immersion. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, je ne parle pas français. Uh, I, I, what I say is j'oublie tout mes français. So, yeah. Alex, uh, Nav, hi Nav in Calgary. Hey, Ditya. Hey, Angie. Great stuff. Okay, so it seems to be working. Um, fantastic. Well, uh, first off, thank you so much, everybody, for taking some time to join us. Um, we're really excited to be sharing how to hire and uh, work with it, global tech talents and how to do it easy, uh, easily. Um, so I'm Ilya, I'm the co-founder and CEO at VanHack. Uh, we're building the world's largest marketplace for tech talent who wants to get hired abroad. Um, and of course, that means working remotely, working in different countries. Uh, and I'm really excited to be joined by the CEO of Deal, Alex, who's here with us, who is, uh, I guess, they've been having a lot of success and been a great partner for us this year that helps you manage your uh, international team's payroll and um, compliance. Um, but yeah, Alex, if you could just please get us out with a better introduction than the one I just did. Tell us a little about yourself sure. and a little about Deal. Well, well first, Ilya, thank you so much for, for having me. I'm really excited. And yeah, thank you for being such an awesome partner this year. Um, <clears throat> so I'm Alex. I'm the CEO of Deal, uh, originally from France, lived in uh, quite a few countries and continents. Um, I founded Deal in early 2019, end of 2018. And the mission of the company is to help companies hire in different countries. We want to make it really easy for you to hire anyone anywhere. And I guess we'll, we'll dive into the details later, but <clears throat> quick background on the company. We're about now two years old. We've raised about $50 million from Silicon Valley investors like Andreessen Horowitz, Smart Capital, White Combinator. Uh, we're about 70 people today uh, in 25 different countries. So uh, we, we leverage global tech talents for sure, actually global talents as a whole. And yeah, we have about a thousand customers from small companies all the way to public companies and definitely share a couple of great customers with you guys at Manhack. Fantastic. Um, super exciting. It is a brave new world we live in, right? With, without much uh, borders uh, in some sense of the world. Um, other places there, there are a little more. Um, all right, cool. So we got a lot of questions uh, to go through here on, our, on my side um, as we talk through it. But um, of course, if you have questions, um, please ask. Um, we would love to have an interactive session um, and just hear what, what your biggest questions are. We'll leave some time for more formal Q&A at the end. Uh, but if you ever want us to dive deeper into a specific subject, uh, please, please let us know. Um, so let's, let's kind of talk about this maybe as a, a funnel where you have people from, from the beginning of the talent search phase, so the, the sourcing, recruiting, that we can go into maybe uh, a little bit of interviewing and then more onboarding um, and then kind of managing the team and retention. Uh, and then you know, there's a, a few other things there, but um, I think that could make sense of how we can go from, from kind of the, the top to, have, to really building that, that great team. Um, so let, let's start there. Like, so you said you, you, you're at 70 people now, um, you've, grown, you've grown a lot. So how has, um, how has I guess, been your, your how has your talent strategy been and how has global hiring factored into that yeah so we are indeed 70 we started the year i think at uh, i think 15 or less than that so it's been uh, it's been some very fun growth on our side um, we're a remote first company i've actually myself never worked in an office before um so i couldn't really know the feeling <clears throat> so we built deal remote first today we are in 25 plus countries ourselves and we you know we help customers in over 150 of them um, the, our strategy on the hiring side, uh, obviously, we want to hire the best people, uh, and unbiasedly, we, we think that we should do that wherever they are, regardless of their location. Um, when it comes to hiring on our side, there's a few things we, we put in place. Uh, we have a pretty strong strategy where we work with great recruiters like Vanhag and others. Uh, we have a pretty strong push on our brand as well. So if you look at around 
still the awareness of the brand from a remote first perspective, like we starting to be a little more known. So that drives quite a bit of inbound on the applicant side. Um, and that, that has been pretty helpful. And then overall, uh, something that's really important for us is um, we make sure to hire as diverse as we can. Um, so it doesn't matter where you are, as long as you fit in within the time zones of the different role we're taking, which is something we could even speak about, like how do you break down different time zones of a global team and how we've gone about it. Uh, then you know you're more than welcome to apply, and we're excited to meet you. Nice. Yeah, actually, that was going to be my next question about the time zone because you have this this team, seventy people around the world, twenty five countries. Um, do you have like specific functions all working in kind of more sales side? For example, U.S. sales side will have a team in the U.S. and Canada. On the sales side in Europe, we'll have people in the U.K. or Israel or France. On the on product side, um, at the beginning, we kind of took the decision to keep people within Europe. So we'll have people in Israel, in the Ukraine, in Russia, in Poland, in, in the UK, and everybody's kind of that in that time zone. We actually made our first hire uh, in Brazil on the engineering side because we were starting to really need more people to help us on the support side from an engineering standpoint in those time zones as well. Then we, we use Slack way too much. Um, so, you know, we do have some overlaps and there's definitely some interesting things like we have our all hands every first day at 6 p.m. Israel time, which is like 4 p.m. in the UK, which kind of overlaps with everyone. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's you know, it's a mix. Uh, support, and, uh, unless people are working, you know, night shift, which it's hard to find. So it's definitely a huge benefit, right, of, of, of having that flexibility. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, you could also argue that uh, as a company selling to U.S. companies as well, like we sell to companies around the world, but I mean, the U.S. is a pretty big market. There, there was no way for us not to have people in the United States. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, you, you, you want to, you have, I guess, the best of both worlds, right? You have people in specific areas and then also, um, yeah, the, the global coverage. And you can, you can have that sales to customers all over the world pretty quickly, um, for sure. Uh, and just see here, Angie, uh, are you having connection issues? Maybe re refresh. Um, that could, that could, that could, of course, the old <laughs> tried and true. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure what the issues could be. We've, we've done a lot of webinars on this platform, and they usually are okay. Um, have to reconnect every minute or so. Okay, well, it's, I don't know. Let's say, guys, it's uh, next time maybe we'll do Zoom uh, webinar chat. We've, we've used quite a bit, but who knows. Okay, um, let's just keep going. Okay, so um, refresh multiple times. Okay, well, um, keeps freezing. Um, yeah, hopefully it settles down. Um, I'm not sure, sorry guys. Uh, I guess one of the, the challenges of, of doing things remotely, <laughs> we have to work with this. Um, okay, cool. So how about like once you've made the hire, right? Like um, you, you bring the person on the team, how do you make sure that they feel part of the team, especially if you're going through this rapid growth? Like, how do you make sure you onboard them well um, and, and keep them, you know, engaged and, and empower them to have success in the first 30, 60, 90 days or and beyond? Yeah, I mean, you know, within the panel, I think you jumped up a couple of hooks, but I assume, assuming that you've done all the job well and they're welcoming to the team and everything is cleared up and, you know, you've onboarded them. Uh, in there's different mechanisms you can do. Uh, at Deal, what we have is we have on uh, the people upside someone that will sit down and walk you through onboarding, and then your direct report will spend quite a bit of time with you, making sure that you're comfortable. For example, on the engineering side, you know, onboarding is a big deal. So uh, we have a buddy system where someone helps you figure out most of the engineering stack on your side and where you're going to be, as well as you know our CTO that will make sure that you're in the right place and and that you're well welcomed. And over time, you know, between uh, weekly check-ins or at the beginning, maybe daily check-ins, uh, welcome meetings and, and activities within the company to make sure that, you know, you know who you, who your teammates are. Although it, it gets really hard already. Like we, we've done a couple interesting things to make it easier, but when mm -hmm. you suddenly have like 10 people starting in a week, <laughs> uh, you know, you start to lose track a little bit, not as a CEO. Like I, you know, I, I still interview everybody at the company, but for, you know, someone on the sales side to meet someone on the engineering side that's now in Brazil, like, you know, the connection is a bit, is a bit rougher. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's some ways to go about it. But what's more important is within your team and within your department, making sure that you're welcome the right way, you're given all the tools, you're really comfortable in the setup that you have, and, and people have gone the extra mile to make sure that you're there. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, we, um, for us on our side, we've, we started these uh, happy hours every two weeks um, where we have different people uh, presenting their culture. So next week will be Romania. Um, and that's been really nice having the team kind of share, share that. That's been kind of my favorite thing this year is bringing us together. 
Um, cause yeah, we're, we're, you know, we're also remote first company, et cetera. Um, that's, a, yeah. that's a really cool idea actually. I'm, I might steal that one from you. I, I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And actually one thing that we've done, um, that, that's been really nice is a, after, uh, we do the, 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 the happy hour, um, people, we get people like, um, a voucher to go buy a meal from that country. So a lot of times like people haven't tried Romanian food or haven't tried Portuguese food or whatever it might be. And so they can go out and, and, um, have a, a dinner or lunch from from that country or, or maybe cook their ingredients at home and uh take a picture and share it so that's been a, a nice cool. thing um so how long is that presentation uh it, it's like a half an hour um oh and, wow half an hour in the country well, okay I, i think i'll make it more like five ten minutes for them <laughs> <laughs> uh that's, that's actually really cool what we we started something that i really like which is after all, all hands which is so we have a whole hands every two weeks and every other week we'll have a product meeting so the whole mm -hmm. company is aware of like where we are on the product side. Mm. Uh, so two people on my team started this uh, fun time where every week they pick like a different game that we'll play and whoever you know, has the time after the all has to stay does it. Mm. And it's actually been really fun. Um, you know, I, I wish the US didn't start their day so late. So it's like the first thing that they would do in their day. So a lot of them, you know, on the sales side, all of that, you know, they, they want to jump into their first demos. So not everybody is able to participate just yet, but you should, mm. the, the gaming thing is actually quite fun. Cool, cool. After maybe you can uh, send me some, or if you want to share with everyone here, what which games you guys play? Is it like on on an online platform or? Yeah, we play not directly on the web. We played Code Names, uh, Among Us, um, and there's another the drawing game. I don't remember that one, but you basically draw something, and the other teammates have the first one to guess it scores the most points. It's actually pretty fun. All right, cool. I'll we'll, we'll send out the links after. Um, cool. Let's let's get into uh, money uh, and, and payments and taxes. So we'll, we'll make a little hard pivot here from 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 uh, <laughs> gaming and, and, and food. Um, so so how how does that work? Like right? that's that, that's always the question that we get. Is hey, I've, I've made this hire. The person's living in another country. Uh, how do I make sure I'm compliant as a uh, Canadian, U.S. Um, etc. company to be having this person on my team? Um, and, and, and like either for indefinitely or for a few months, like how do you even start thinking about all that? Welcome to my word. It's a messy word, uh, but this is where we help. So basically the way you need to think about it is, uh, there's different ways to engage with someone in another country. So traditionally, apart from relocation, which I think you guys are doing, and that's really cool. Um, uh, I, I don't really know where we would relocate people, but you know, that's still pretty cool. Uh, there's three main ways. The first one is opening a subsidiary, which to some extent you gotta be very far about, like you gotta be sure you want to do that and understand the legal consequences, the accounting consequences of doing that. But if you, ex you plan on expanding into a country, that's something that is pretty common. Um, mm. <clears throat> the two other ways are hiring people as independent contractors or hiring them as full-time employees through a third party company. Um, You know, shameless plug, this is exactly what we do, those two things at deal. Uh, but for the sake of explaining how that works, uh, as a company, if you wanted what's called an EOR, an employer of record, uh, so that's basically a company, for example, Deal UK, you wanted to hire that person as an employee in the UK, then we would have our own subsidiary in that country, and then we would employ that person as an FTE, and then as, you know, handle all the benefits, HR, statutory taxes, everything, and then invoice you every month for their salary and everything that goes with that. So that's one of the ways to do it. The second way to do it is hiring them as independent contractors. And this is actually something we're actually really good at and one of the market leaders in. And what we help here is making sure that your relationship with that person is as compliant as it can be from a theoretical standpoint. So the risk that you're putting yourself into when hiring someone as an independent contractor is are misclassification, potential tax evasion, and understanding the dynamics of is, is there a risk of misclassification is, is a little complex. Uh, so, you know, maybe we'll talk about it later, but when you decide to engage someone as an independent contractor, what, what you need to be aware of is that in Ontario, the data clauses are different than in British Columbia. Quebec has completely different rules on some of the topics than, than in Ontario as well, right? And you'll have to have some parts of the contract in French. Uh, in France, where I'm from, the laws are quite different. And to set up as an independent contractor, you've got quite a few ways to do it, right? There is uh, you know, maybe 10 plus ways to do it, right? And you as a Canadian company, to some extent, you're expected when you're paying that person to make sure that you're compliant, right? To make sure that from a local neighborhood local standpoint, uh, or that you're not misclassifying that person, or that, you know, if they're sending you an invoice, they can actually issue that invoice, right? If they can't, 
then you're helping them tax evade. So mm -hmm. understanding the full stack is really important. And then what you end up having is you end up having a team where some people might be there for a few months, some people might be there for longer. You might have you know have a mix up of some EOR, some independent contractors, and you need to make sure that regardless of the model you go for, one, you handle everything completely, two, you give your team a really good experience. That's that's really important. So mm -hmm. um, you know, excluding what we do from the conversation, what I mean by a good experience is if they're an independent contractor, they'll issue you invoices, you have to collect the invoices. If you're in Canada, there's the payment methods to someone abroad is not super exciting. Uh, I don't know if TransferWise has even gotten there just yet, right? So you need to think through the different hoops of, yeah, are they there yet? Okay, cool. So like, you need to try your best to give a really good experience because those those people are teammates, right? They're not just a provider you're sending money to, and even providers, you should, you should be should be nice to them if you can. Uh, yeah. So that would be one of the first part. So, I mean, you know, this is a topic I can dive into and talk about for hours, unless you have something specific about it. <laughs> yeah, so Josh, Joshua asked a really good question, uh, is how do you stay on top of all the different laws and regulations across the world? Like, is there a, a mad team of lawyers somewhere? Um, do you partner locally? Like, how do you make sure that, you, I think yeah. you said something about like 150 countries. Um, how, yeah. how do you make sure that it's all, it's all compliant everywhere? So we have, uh, senior counsel in-house in, that are overseeing operations with pretty strong operational teams. And what we do is we go into different countries. Uh, in some countries, we have our own subsidiaries. In some countries, we're putting our own subsidiaries. Uh, and in others, not yet, we're partnering with different people. And what we do there is we work with legal firms and accounting firms. So minimum three per country in each one of those things. And we have them review our contracts. We have them give us all the different advices on how to do things right. And we do that on a quarterly. We have reviews on a quarterly basis with them to make sure that we are on top of those laws. And if you look at those, uh, this changes all the time. So in the UK, they're introducing something called IR35, which is a law about how do you define a contractor versus an employee. That's quite actually interesting. In the US, there was a lot of noise around that rule called AB5. So staying on top of the law is a big part of what we do. And uh, I'm actually, we're actually pretty passionate about the difference between all those laws and what can you do in what cases. That's something that we help our customers kind of understand. Uh, but you need to really be thinking through the different options. And you know, sometimes some some larger companies we work with, you know, they they don't take everything we do for granted, right? They actually want to dive into that. And some oftentimes they'll they'll talk directly about lawyers, right? Our network of lawyers is accessible to everyone, regardless of if, whether you use it or not. You can go on our legal partners page. Not all of them are on there because some of them uh, don't want to be publicly on the on the landing page, but you can already see quite a few of the companies we work with, and those guys know what they're talking about. They're local experts. Very cool. Very cool. Um, and then Jess asked another good question here. So you mentioned there are two ways to hire when you consider people hiring someone as an independent contractor versus employee. We have a few team members. We'll be onboarding. We need to decide how to do that. Um, so yeah, how do you know? Yeah. I mean, there's lots of rules and regulations about how you want to go about it, right? Um, the employer of record model is uh, pretty new, let's say. <clears throat> Basically, it's a, I don't know if you know what PEO model is, which it's a US model of employment where uh, you are in California, you want to hire in Massachusetts. You don't, you're not registered in Massachusetts just yet. You work with a PEO like Trinet that co-employ with you. They share the liability on employment. As soon as you want to go outside the US, uh, that a notion of complement is not there anymore. And this is where an employer of record kind of comes into place, right? These are the companies that employ on your behalf and take on all the liability for you, although there is back-to-back -back agreements and all that. So when you're approaching the hiring, you need to think of a few things. One, the employer of record model is, is expensive. Uh, and on, you know you got to pay all the statutory taxes. You got to pay the salary. You got to pay the EOR fee. Uh, and although amazing companies that are coming up are getting that price lower, it's still pretty expensive. Second, you want to think about the relationship itself. So you can always set up a relationship with someone as an independent contractor. And there are tools online, like if you look at the UK, the HMRC gives you tools to understand. Actually, in Canada, uh, I can link that after. One of my friends at Queen's Law actually built uh, a form of, uh, not a calculator, but a workflow to understand should that person be an independent contractor or not. So that's actually going to be quite interesting. So you can shape the relationship in a way that that person can be classified as a contractor or should they be classified as an employee? So it's really up to how you shape that relationship. Mm -hmm. And from a risk perspective, you need to understand the risk you're facing. And if you think, hey, you know, the way I'm working with that person, uh, they should really be an employee, That's then maybe you should go down the EOR path. Cool, cool. Yeah, um, Jess, uh, will that person be 
kind of staying in that location for a long time? Like, how do you how do you see that? Maybe that can help us and uh, answer your question. Um, it's also I, very country specific, right? There's mm -hmm. some countries like uh, Ukraine and Russia they're a little more they're more favorable to want to the independent contract model versus France or Germany, which are very on the employee right side where they you know they don't like the idea of you not paying all the statutory taxes and all of that. Yeah, speaking of Germany, actually, I heard that German is basically like you can't, as a German employer, uh, you can't hire independent contractors or it's very hard. Um, no, you can. You can. It, it, again, it's about how you set up the relationship. I, the, the way you need to think about an independent contractor from a legal perspective, someone is performing services for you, right? Regardless of the relationship, you can always hire, like, have someone performing services for you and settling them. Uh, but the you know the German laws about is that person an independent or not are a bit more complex. Actually, on the EOR model, on the employer frequent model, German laws are actually even tougher sometimes. There's some ways you cannot set up that relationship for longer than two years in some contexts. Actually, we have the right partner in Germany to do it for more than two years. Uh, so that's one of the reasons we decided to work with a partner there. But it's you know, Germany is very complicated. Like France, actually, France is pretty tough on those topics. Yeah, definitely. There's a uh, um, yeah. Having lived in Germany, and um, it, it was really difficult for for some of our employees there, our team members. Um, anyway, uh, let's let's move on here. Uh, so Danielle uh, asks uh, about how are you different from other co companies in the field. Um, so Daniel Thompson from, from Spain. Hi, Daniel. Yeah, it depends on the stage you're looking at. You know, if you look at the market leaders today, you're looking at a globalization partner or Velocity Global, right? They are still not huge, actually. They're still, I think, at the billion dollar valuation, which is not that big. And then if you look at the enterprise level where people, you know, with all due respect, it's a little less about giving great experience. It's just about onboarding people in other countries. You've got the decos or the men powers of the world. Um, I think the way we differentiate ourselves really heavily is uh, you know, on the employer of record, BPOs and agencies have kind of existed forever, right? You've, people have been hiring through agencies in the Ukraine for the last 20, 30 years, right? It's not new. Mm -hmm. Where we kind of different is one in the experience we want to give your team, right? So giving them a lot of choices on payment methods, working on a lot of perks, insurance, and all of that. And where I feel we're the strongest is because we actually have a strong model on the independent contractor and monetize on that model we can actually be very honest and unbiased towards which model you go for. So we don't need, for example, to say, oh, you know, for that model, you know, it's free, clearly because we make money on the others, right? Because we want you to go towards that employer frequent model. We can be very unbiased towards saying, look, if you think that's the relationship you should go for, mm -hmm. we can help you make sure it's sold. If you think it's the other, likewise, we're there for both cases. And that unbiasedness in both models, I think is one of our strongest, where we're just here to help you and make sure we give a great experience, regardless of what you think is right for that specific person. Very cool. And you mentioned perks. I just want to talk about that a little bit. Um, you, I, I saw something where you guys put a um, you you can pay, get paid earlier as a contractor through a deal. Like you can you, you're helping them with some salary. Um, yeah, that's fun. That's one of the things. So on the employee model, we can read all of that. You know, those guys are employed through us. So I'm not. Um, we're not. We haven't figured out the ways to do it just yet. There. On the independent side, so always trying to build different packs. So, you know, maybe before getting into cash events, we released recently a partnership with Headspace, the meditation app, right? So we, you know, they partner with us to give a better experience to your teammates and giving them access to their product, uh, which was really nice. And we're, long, we're planning on doing more of those things. The idea is to give your team a better experience there. The cash event side, I'm actually pretty excited about because cash events is something that is pretty new even in the US, right? If you look at Square or Gusto, that's something that they just released and we've kind of released it very well. The way we've looked at this is <clears throat> everywhere in the world, you, you know, I think the average American doesn't have 400 bucks right now if they needed it. Uh, that's what I remember reading. But regardless, the way I look at it, it we want to be helpful. So we've structured it in a way that if you need $100 right now, uh, we have, it's usually 50, but we upped it up to 100 today for Christmas. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. actually spot it for you for free because we can see that you know you've been getting paid through deal and that you you know we can see the legitimacy of the contract and all that. And giving them access to that capital right now if they need it just to cover for that overdraft or for that invoice or that utility bill is actually pretty nice. And then generally, you know, giving you the ability to get an advance on your salary is something we think is actually quite worth it. Uh, so those are, you know we're building up quite a few perks. So 
we have, for example, insurances. We give them access to different insurances. We partner with local partner with local insurers so that we can get group discounts for them because they're on the platform. So building that experience in a way that, you know, because maybe they're independent contractors, you cannot give them everything you want, or because they're employees in a country where you don't own the infrastructure, you cannot do that. We just want to improve their experience overall because you, you know, when you're thinking about hiring globally, why should your teammate in France not have the same experience as your teammate in Canada? For sure, yeah, that that's a uh, that's a really good point, and, and that's cool that you can give people this, you know, a little bit of cash advance. Um, I think that's pretty innovative. No, no, no one else seems to be doing that. Awesome. Um, Tal asked another good question here about uh, accounting. So, if you're paying people in different countries, how do you reconcile the currencies in accounting? Do you just keep it in your, you know, like the main entity currency, or how does that all work? So, I'm going to talk about. A company paying other people right now deal because we we've got a beautiful infrastructure that's way over complex because we've got so many subsidiaries um so there's kind of two ways to go about it the first one is do you want to sign a contract in local currency or in usd or in canadian dollars whatever you're more favorable for actually we have a pretty cool canadian launch coming this week so this is going to be pretty fun i think next week sorry we're already first uh but based on that you kind of decide the way we work at deal is we like to keep contracts in usd uh, it just makes it simpler. So we make offers in USD and we keep contracts in USD. So that simplifies our own accounting. Uh, and then on the other side of the equation, it's about you know, when your teammates get their salary in USD, giving them a really good experience for them to use it in their local currency or whatever is more convenient for them. Nice, nice. Yeah, we do the same. We just we do it in CAD instead of USD. But I, th it's like, I think it's easier to have everything in one currency, which is the kind of home currency, because I'm guessing you guys are US. Incorporated, uh, Isaac. It's like yeah, yeah, our C corp. Yeah, 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 yeah we're C corp. Sweet, sweet. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, Josh was asking if all the qual all of your contracts qualify to use the. I I'm guessing he's talking about the cash advance. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, almost. You need to have a little bit of history, and there's a few rules around. So we, you know, we take compliance very seriously. We've got. Uh, bank graded compliance and we do KYC sanction screening and all of that at deal. Uh, so assuming all of that is done and you've got enough history at the company using the product, sorry, uh, and working for that company, then yes, it should be there. Nice, nice. Yeah, like I'm guessing you probably don't do it the first month that they start because maybe they, they don't, they don't, you know, don't, don't do a good job and don't stay at the company, but maybe after three to six, you know, there's a good chance that they'll be there for a while. That's cool. Yeah, all the criteria are described on the website based on yeah. like where you are and all that. Nice. Uh, Meredith is asking, I had had issues sending international bank transfers, mainly that the fees were too high at times. Yeah, that's a pretty common problem. Um, do you guys help with that? Does you help with that? We, we should. Um, well, actually, when is that? But when are you going to launch that? Or is it live on there right now? Because I can tell you what's coming up so you guys will know in advance. Which which one do you mean? Sorry. This podcast. When are you going to push it live? Uh, probably right after. Yeah. Right after? So if you want, okay, fine. If it's right after, then I can tell you just. Well, we have a really nice feature coming out next week for Canada, which should make a lot of your problems a lot better <laughs> uh, and make payments a lot easier. But overall, what I would say is that what we do at Deal is we split pain from payout, which is very important for contractors. Employees is a different story, right? We run payroll locally. So we receive the funds, we invoice you for the work, and then we, we will run payroll locally. On the contractor side, what we do is we split pain from payout. So you can pay however you want. So let's say you have 15 people. You make one big wire transfer to us or one payment in Canadian dollars maybe somehow to us. And then on the other side, your teammates get their money in their deal balance, automatically withdrawn whatever they want. And we support and aggregate all the best payment providers. So TransferWise of the world, Pioneer, uh, Revolut, all of those and local bank transfers so that their fees is much lower. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that... Technically, we should be able to help you reduce fees and improve their experience because another thing of international transfer is that oftentimes they're slow, they're hard to track and all those things. How about cryptocurrency? Is that something you guys are thinking about? That is something we have already. <laughs> nice. As an independent, you can get your funds in BTC, XRP or ETH directly, yes. Beautiful, very cool. Um, so Alana is asking more about this question is like, how is it different though than using um, like, let's say just TransferWise or Payoneer? Is it, be, is it like, I, I, I can guess why, but I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, sure. I mean, we work with TransferWise and Payoneer. We're not sitting on top of them. We work with them. We provide you with 
one, the compliance aspect of the relationship, two, you know, the collection of documents, the ability to hire someone as an independent or as an employee. We give you all the tools from a team management, from an accounting, thinking, and all of these processes, right? We're, n we're never competing with the TransferWise. We work with the TransferWise. Potentially, you'll get better rates with the TransferWise because we have a lot more volume uh, than most companies. So uh, it's about being more compliant and also about having processes, right? If you're really early on and you just want to do a PayPal to someone, you don't really know where it's going, you know, then TransferWise or PayPal might be the right thing. Uh, but then you're going to collect the invoices and all those things. So we generate that automatically. But if you really want to build a team, give a great experience and be able to scale. So we have companies with thousands of people on there as well. Then uh, no, I, I don't think it, those tools that are only a payout mechanisms and don't do much else are the right thing for your company. Right, because like the rate's going to be the same or even maybe better with you guys. But you also have to take care of all the legal and all that headache. And then... Like I can imagine receiving a thousand invoices as an HR person every month and having to make sure that everything's correct and that you didn't pay the wrong. Yeah, um, exactly. So it's you know collecting the right documents, making sure the infrastructure is all right, making sure that full time the documents of your teammates when they change based on their infrastructure every X. You know, like for example, in Colombia, the documents that they need to upload, they need to upload them every month for mm -hmm. you to be fully compliant. So making sure that we provide that and we collect them all the time. Uh, localized contract, like, like you know, it's it's a tool. It's a full stack tool. You know, payments is just a part of what we do. And, um, you know, if you want to pay someone in Brazil as a business, TransferWise can do that, right? They cannot do BRL directly unless you're doing a peer-to-peer -peer payment. Or if you want to pay some, so, you know, that's why we have to integrate all those providers. And one other thing is that you think making X payment is really good for your teammate, but they don't really want to tell you that it's not really great for them. So giving them the ability to control their funds, even split withdraw into different payouts, like to me is actually very, very interesting. Interesting. So I think we should dive deeper on that, what you just said, just to make sure everyone understands split payouts. So let's say I'm getting paid $1,000 a month, um, just to keep it simple. Um, I can take out $500 into my local currency and another $500 into another currency. Is that is that right? or? And you can even take a hundred and take them in crypto if you wanted to. Cool, cool. Nice, nice. You're in full control of their funds. You don't need to update, you know, the payment methods that you like. You can update it directly. You don't need to tell your people ops person like, hey, I need to get paid in. You're in full control of your money. Um, and I mean, there is there's other cool features there where you what you can leave your funds to do some other stuff there too. Very interesting. Um, and then I guess also like I can imagine where in 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 our, in our kind of work from everywhere world um, or work from anywhere world, you you can have people who are maybe living in one country one day for six months and then move to another country and then you know they might need the currency changed right. So um, yes, that, that ability I think would be pretty nice. Yeah, so you, you got to be a bit cautious about this because there is a, a residency rule, right? Uh, mm. If it's more than 183 days, like uh, that person should be paying taxes in their local country. And we've seen uh, quite a few companies uh, hiring people and not realizing that, uh, that they had spent too much time in other countries. We've had, you know, because you're remote first, you don't even, sometimes you don't even tell. I don't even know sometimes where my some of my teammates are. They're just in different countries. And there yeah. are rules around taxes and where you're located and where you should pay your taxes that to some extent, you could be liable for as a company if you're not aware of it. Um, so the answer is yes, you can do that, but you need to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a lot of complexities. I was reading um, the Wall Street Journal or one of those publications the other day how there's just this huge rise of the digital nomad um, because you know everyone's remote. And um, I think once COVID uh, settles down, um, just gonna, that's even going to go much higher because. Uh, there's not going to be that fear of travel and also everyone's used to working remotely. So, yeah, I can see that being a, a huge um, thing that HR departments are going to have to deal with and think about. Um, so, interesting. Um, cool. Uh, yes, Alessandra, this this webinar will be uh, available to watch later. We'll put it on the Van Hack YouTube channel in our, our podcast as well. Um, cool. Uh, Vincent's asking, do you already have any partnerships in Tunisia? If by partnerships you mean... Do we support Tunisia as a country? The answer is yes. My mom was born in Tunisia, actually. So yes, we do. Uh, cool. If it's partnership with the country, not yet, but I would love to get some of those things going. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, another question here, and keep, keep them coming. These, these are great. So Angie is asking, can you employ people in another province and then employ them as if they were an employee in your province? 
So I'm, I'm, this is more, I think, for Canada specific. Like, are you? Yeah, the, the answer company? is yes, you can. But the truth, it, it depends. So some, we have some pretty large companies that use us for that. It's a little, it's it's easier than in the U.S., which is a totally different topic in the U.S. Uh, the answer is yes, uh, but you know I understand why some of those very large companies use us for that. But you know, registering in different provinces is actually not super complex. So um, you know, something to think about. Cool. Thanks. Um, can you maybe give us some horror stories of uh, like co companies that have come to you and, and said, you know, like this is our situation and you just couldn't believe that they, uh, you know, had uh, done something wrong or, or had some, some big pain points that you have to help them through? Uh, I mean, we've definitely seen quite a few horror stories. Uh, thankfully, uh, we've never seen anything for deal customers. We've had a couple customers win over lawsuits with our contracts, which is really great. Uh, we've seen companies, we've seen GCs coming to us and being really freaked out. Like, so for example, Brazil is one of the, the tough country on independent contracting. And after a couple of years, this is really where you should consider moving into an employer record model. And you know, I have definitely had a GC come to me and tell me it's been like five years. Those guys have been independent contractors. Like they're going to sue us at some point or something is going to happen at some point. Uh, and that, you know, that was one of the, it's, it was a pretty big company as well, like a public company. So they were, they were hell scared for sure. Mm. Um, the, you know, some of the horror stories that we've seen, I mean, you know, when misclassification cases, we've seen quite a few of them uh, and international misclassification cases as well. Uh, what happened with those, it's quite interesting is they actually always get settled. Um, so they cost quite a bit of money, but they always get settled. They don't make it public because uh, most companies don't want to have to send a lawyer overseas to actually handle that specific case. Uh, but we've seen, yeah, we've seen quite a few of them. I mean, obviously I cannot give you names, but uh, on yeah. our side, we've been helpful with quite a few companies. <laughs> cool, cool. No, it's just, just general high level stories is, is, is fine. <laughs> we don't want to get anyone into trouble. Um, awesome. Cool. Um, and how about to like, um, like when when people are are trying to um, like like how how does this um, help with closing the, the the deal in terms of like employee? Like, have you seen deal be used as a um, HR like talent acquisition tool and differentiator when you let's say someone is getting a few offers and one of them is saying, hey, well, we have this platform for you. Uh, have you heard that from your customers where like? The, the, the contractor or employee internationally prefers that they, like is, is happy that you they have this, this kind of tool yeah I think uh, I mean transparently we haven't had people come forward and say like oh because we use deal has been the decision breaker I mean I hope it happens we've yeah. had we've had a mix up a few things we've had people getting hired from past jobs and saying I you know I want to get paid for deal like this is the way to actually bring me on board and be compliant and give me a great experience so that has been really nice because We've been around for now a year and a half as a product, so that has happened quite quite nicely. Uh, another thing is, so we have 27, 24 seven customer support. So, you know, this morning I had someone come on on intercom and ask us, "Hey guys, like, uh, I need to work. I'm going to work for that U.S. company. I'm thinking the first few months being an independent, and then we'll see it from there. Like, are you aware of R35? Do you know what that is? Like, are you con are your contracts following R35 and that new changes? What should I do? Should I be an LTD or should I be a sole trader? So, like." Having that support for them instead of just saying like, oh, I just sent you a Swift transfer, good luck, figure it out, uh, is, I mean, you know, to me in, in the times where we're living is how you should treat your teammates. Cool, cool. And Daniel, the answer is yes. So all, all, all Van Hack uh, hiring partners do get a uh, preferential rate for deal. Um, and we use, um, I think about 10 or something like that customers have used, um, have hired. So what they do is they hire from Van Hack um, typical use cases, you hire from Van Hack um, someone who's abroad. Um, during the time that they're abroad, let's say three to six months, they'll work as an independent contractor or EOR um, uh, through, through not, they're not the EOR, but deal is your EOR, you know what I mean, employee. Uh, and then and then once they relocate to Canada or wherever you might be based, Spain, Europe, I think Daniel, you're in Spain, they'll become a, a full-time employee on your payroll. So it's been a really good kind of, um, start point um, to to uh, for, for some of our customers because they don't have to worry about uh, you know all the legalities and, and payrolls taken care of um, and we've heard good things from from companies so yeah uh, that's one of the reasons we're having this webinar is because it's been a really good win win um, so yeah that's that's how it's been cool 
sorry, fair enough. Uh, but also, you know, one of the things you need to think about is uh, I'm sure during COVID, relocating is not as easy as well. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a slowdown. So we're seeing a lot of people work remotely longer. Um, before it used to be two months. Now it's the three to six. Um, and and then it's it's been good having the, the that kind of um, solution for for companies um, because the the usually what people did is because it was two months they just waited they didn't have the person start remotely so they would wait the two months for the person to start once they relocated um, and then now there's the kind of remote relocate and then even sometimes remote again because they're they might have moved to Spain but they're working remotely from Spain um, yeah yeah so and Siri yeah three to six months is because of the pandemic yeah. Yeah, we've we've had some as uh, as long as nine months, um, just people just waiting through the paperwork. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, so it's been really good to have a uh, solution for those companies and, and those uh, new 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 hires or candidates, I guess hires um, during during that period. Yeah, and a few companies as well just have people like a remote. Um, um, how do you say? Uh, indefinitely, like so. Uh, it really depends on on the on the company. Cool. Um, yeah, so um, let's see more questions here. During working as a contractor, how does insurance work? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, health, you, you touched on that a little bit, but we, let's dive deeper into insurance, um, especially health insurance. Yeah, so I mean, it depends where you're hiring from, right? Like in some countries, like in the UK, you've got the NHS or in France, you know, we're pretty well covered on the, on the health side. Uh, so technically, you shouldn't. Uh, provide health insurance to an independent contractor. Uh, that's not advised because uh, then, you know, the idea of misclassification, which is that person starts looking more and more like an employee and you're putting yourself at risk. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I personally wouldn't advise it, but one thing we do have on deal and we, we share quite a, we work at pretty often as well is the ability for your teammates to get access to those health insurers directly on the platform. So one thing, you know, one thing we're lucky to have is we have tens of thousands of people on the platform today. So we can go to see those insurance partners and say, hey, give a better deal to all the people on deal. That's what uh, that's what we want for them. And we want to give them the ability to get access to those health insurance products. And uh, truly, that's one of the only ways to to provide health insurance in my in my mind uh, to independent contractors. Actually, you shouldn't be the one providing it. They should be the one getting it. And you want to empower them by bringing them on a tool like like deal to get them, uh, get it at a cheaper price. Nice. So. Just to recap, you as an employer should not be giving the independent contractor, but because they're uh, to give to give them health insurance, but because you're part of deal, the person can buy it on their own at a cheaper rate. So today, exactly. Yeah. But for example, you know, and this this is one of the exciting thing of being in that space is that you know we have uh, AB five coming into place in the U.S. and Prop twenty two that law for Uber and Lyft that passed. Uh, they're working on providing potential more benefits to people working in the gig economy as independent contractors. And that will affect everyone working as an independent contractor. So those rules might change. Uh, you know, I think when you want to do, when, you know, there is pros and cons to how you set up your relationships. And the way I look at things, because we're here to help on compliance, I think you should do it right. And if it means, you know, not being able to cover health insurance for someone you work with during the time you work with them. And uh, that's probably what you should be doing. Nice. Yeah, um, I think it's, it's definitely, um, like if you live in one of those countries like um, UK, uh, et cetera, France, you have the healthcare from, from the state, which is nice. But if you, if you don't, um, then being able to purchase it at a cheaper rate is, is a huge deal. So that's great. Pun intended on that one. <laughs> I'm sure you get those jokes all the time. Um, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, doesn't it? Uh, Vincent, how does VanHack handle relocation? Uh, yeah, so that's one of our core competencies. We have a global mobility team in house who takes care of all the paperwork for the, our employers um, and also for the the Van Hack, Van hackers who got hired. Um, which um, yeah, it's something that we we are, for example, in Canada, the largest international recruiting company in the country, um, and we we've done more of the kind of fast track visas called Global Talent Stream in Canada than anyone else. Uh, and then in other countries, we have partners um, that we work with closely uh, to help us with the visa. But uh, all, all employers, uh, all companies who hire through VanHack, we help them uh, with at no extra cost uh, to take care of all the all the visa paperwork. Um, so yeah, it's something we've, we've done quite a bit. 
Um, Vincent, I'm curious, where, where, which country are you based in? And I really like your name. Um, kind of like Van Hack, they, Hack with a V, that's cool. That <laughs> nice. Uh, cool. So yeah, we have a, a few more minutes here. Um, any any uh, kind of thing that uh, got, uh, how do you say, parting words, Alex, that people should think about? Um, what's maybe one piece of advice that everyone should, should really consider um, when thinking about hiring globally? Yeah, I mean, uh, quite a few, but generally I would say uh, talent is everywhere. So make the hire. If you think you've got the right person, you should work with them, you should give them a chance. Uh, you'll be surprised. And the second is, if you know if you see your company as something that's going to scale and that's something that uh, you know you want to build with the right foundations uh, come and chat with us we're here to ensure that you know you have the compliance figured out but more importantly that you're giving you a really good experience because regardless of where they are you need to give them the experience they deserve definitely um that's that's a really good point about uh, the employee experience right like there's as everyone becomes, as, as it, it's a kind of a double-edged sword, right? Like more companies are hiring globally. So there's more competition for the one, for the companies that are hiring globally. Because before, I feel like three or four years ago, for us companies that were hiring globally back then, it was almost like like the, there was just so much talent available. And now like that talent everywhere is getting hired by by companies everywhere. So it's, it's, it's a much more open playing field. A lot of companies come to me and be like, oh, remote developers, they're supposed to be really, really cheap, right? And, and, and like that, that's not true anymore because a lot of remote developers, like the best ones, um, are working remotely for American companies or for German companies or for Swiss companies who have like the currency uh, that they can just um, you know pay pay much better than the companies in other countries. So yeah, I, I think that that's something that's kind of an interesting trend we're seeing. A um, little bit of a tangent, but yeah, something I'm, I've been tracking. Um, so uh, another good question by Meredith. Uh, is there an option to handle expenses and reimbursements? Because that's uh, probably, you know, like if the person um, buys a laptop or something like that for their work, how do you reimburse that? Click up a button on the independent contractor side. So super easy. Uh, happy to show you in person if you want to merit it. And then on the employee side, the same. Um, so if that person is an employee locally and they need to buy something, then uh, we'll be able to expense uh, the receipts that they have for you directly on the platform. Sweet, sweet. It's kind of like, um, Expensify built in, like you just take a picture of the receipts and there it is. Yeah, it's you just add it on. So, you know, the way deal works is that uh, when you're working with someone as an independent, you've got a contract, and on that contract, you have the total amount that's going out for them at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. You can easily add a bonus, the commission, an expense, and if it's an expense, uh, upload a receipt, and both sides, uh, whether it's the independent or the, or the company, they can do that as well. Fantastic. Nice. Yeah, we, uh, um, yeah, I think that's 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 a really uh, nice thing, especially once you get into like again thousands of people or even dozens. Um, it, it can get a lot to, for for HR to manage. Um, yeah, nice, cool. Okay, um, well, I uh, I guess we'll we'll give like a final call to some questions. Uh, Meredith, that was that was a great question. Um, so all, all these little details that you know you maybe don't think of in the beginning, but they become a a big deal um, as as you grow. So nice. I did it again. Um, cool. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks so much, Alex, for for being here with us, um, spending the time. Thank you, everyone who participated as well. Um, we'll be posting this on on the Van Hack YouTube channel and our podcast, as I mentioned. Um, and then we'll also be sending an email in case everyone wants to chat more with Alex um, or chat with with Van Hack to to hire some people, so you can hire some people through Van Hack and then employ them completely through through Deal. It's a it's a great partnership, and we are looking forward to uh, growing together uh, in the future. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Uh, we have some. We have a really cool launch coming in Canada next week, so watch out for that. Hopefully, you get a little bit of PR there. And if you need anything, yeah, please, Ilya, leave my email. I'm super happy to hop on the chat and and help. Awesome. I'm guessing it's just Alex at Let'sDeal dot com. See, you got it. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for being here with us again. Um, have a fantastic rest of your day, uh, no matter where in the world you are. Um, and yeah, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.